Imagine a surrounding with three or less than three floors. An architect comes in and constructs a structure that breaks that floor limit barrier. How do you do this? Well, James Sterling was one to know. Sterling combined modernist criteria such as articulation or formation of programmatic volumes inherited from the abstract composition of vernacular English architecture. Due to this, his buildings got a nickname of red trilogy for using traditional materials like red brick and ceramic tiles of same color. Besides being built in succession for English universities, the first element of this trilogy is Faculty of Engineering at Leicester. Hello friends, my name is Kavil Vag and this is Archiclan. This video is going to be a deep study about Faculty of Engineering at Leicester, but in-depth study of site and building orientation, planning, sections, and how can I forget the concept. This video series will include famous builds of architect James Sterling, such as Engineering Building at Leicester, Faculty of History at Cambridge, Flory Building, finishing what is known as Red Trilogy. Sounds like a work of Tarantino. Fourth video will consist of Architecture School and Banali Bookshop. And the last video will be an analysis of Braun HQ, which is his largest project. So be sure to hit the bell icon, subscribe to the channel, and smash the like button. This video is going to be about engineering building at Leicester. And without any further ado, let's begin with the video. It is important for an architect to establish his international reputation and provide himself with opportunities to design and build in other countries. These buildings demonstrate the evolution of modern architecture. Although many critics had claimed that modern architecture has peaked and was in decline in 1950. Nevertheless, Sterling combines modernist criteria such as articulation or formation of programmatic volumes inherited from abstracts of vernacular English architecture with respect to its context for using traditional materials like red brick and ceramic tiles besides being built in succession for English University. This study is divided into five categories concept, building orientation and site, planning and structure. The structure of the video will be followed by each building. The first one is concept. The building is placed on the corner of the campus and has an irregular shape. Furthermore, the surrounding buildings are all low-rise, thus rendering Govan and Sterling impossible to make their own structure all low-rise due to the project scale. At Ham Common, the partner divided the work between themselves, Sterling doing the teaching tower besides the park and Govan the workshops to the rear. When Sterling was at Yale, Govan had a free hand in design and confessed that he rather liked when Sterling was away. Goan did the initial modeling of teaching tower. Goan deployed the building on a 10-foot grade, placing the lecture theatres on right angles to each other at the foot of the tower from day one. Second, building orientation. The building is located on one end of the campus, directly opposite to the Victoria Park, which consists of low-rise building no more than three floors. Leicester was first to break this rule. Additionally, the irregular shape of the site made it difficult to house the program in low-rise fashion. The need for surface parking has further reduced the allowable built-up area. This also combines the rectangular pavilion with a large testing laboratory that is located in a tower that adopts the geometry of the site that is facing the garden. The roof of the labs is shaped in a geometric fashion, with north face made of glass and south face made of opaque structure. Third one, planning. The tower decreases in width at each floor, thus reducing the circulation traffic provided by the stairs and lift. Held by twin solid enclosures of the stairs in the lift at the back and enclosed at the front by shorter stairs serving the lecture theatres and the laboratories. The core was covered by glass skin with a crystalline geometry that can be traced back to Sterling's Honan competition. Furthermore, being slightly smaller at every upper level, the inclined planes of the glazing is designed so that it can confide each smaller floor plate as the level increases. Furthermore, in these spaces, views through the glazing were framed by angle planes of glass and tiles that revealed concrete. Additionally, unlike most buildings at this time that were regular boxes, the circulation core had a free form that was flexible, dynamic, and geometrically consistent. Clad in patent glazing and carefully detailed, it became testament, proof of marriage of ideas of Sterling's transparency and Gowan's house. Gowan had begun with the glazing, but it was drawn out by Michael Wilford and finished by Sterling who did the facetting of staircase core, realizing there was creative freedom in the patent glazing. Unlike your group work, every member of this group worked equally. Hey Kavil, can you start with the group project? Sure. Just do the planning, section, elevations. Oh yeah, and start with the model also. What are you gonna do? You're gonna watch a movie. Is it about the project? No, it's about SRK. To match the red tiles and glass planes, Gohan designed a wave-like pie glass roof to the engineering shed, in which it evolved to 45-degree roof lights become a series of diamond-shaped prism, this time translucent and glowing white when it lit at night. So there were two prismatic statements, one core of teaching tower and the other workshops which were opaque. The resultant effect was magical, a fairy castle of glass, steel and bright red tiles. Fourth structure. 
the teaching tower and the labs were something of a structural to the force by architect Frank Newby. The labs were elevated above the smaller lecture theatre and needed a floor system that would allow a free passage of service within the floor. They also needed an access panel that would allow heavy equipment to be hoisted into the building. Newby solved this by raising labs on concrete columns using a virendrial floor system that allowed a free passage. Virendrial floor system is a truss without angled or diagonal support system. The diagonal grid of the structure fits neatly into the overall geometry of the structure. Furthermore, sterling sloping projecting windows to the labs may be read as horizontal ribbons. This modeling of the glass allowing air to be sucked in and to escape from glass louvers from the underside, maintaining functional aesthetics. The lecture theatre below is structurally independent of the labs being raised on four concrete columns and cantilevered out 20 feet. A tension between core and surrounding elements as a basis for functional dynamism was included at Leicester. A similar opportunity occurred with the office tower of the teaching block and the lecture theatre below it. UB raises the offices above the lecture theatre on the columns, but this time they serve a dual purpose. Four in situ concrete columns, two at each end, support the lecture theatre in such a way that half lecture theatre is cantilevered out 20 feet. Lastly, we have material. Material used are red bricks with glass panelling and girders with steel to support the flooring. Opi glass is used in the roofing of the labs, making it similar style but cutting off excess heat. Well that's it for the video guys, if you feel like you got anything of value from this video, be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon so you know as soon as the next video comes on and ready to watch. Lastly, do share this video among your friends and your peers. Thank you and see you in the next video. Of staircase core, realizing there was freedom, or and the labs. At Ham Common, at Ham Common, the partner divided the work between themselves. Who did the freedom? Who did the setting of staircase score?